What's up everybody, it's your boy Phil Porto, photographer, videographer, and educator. Welcome back to the channel, and thank you for rocking with me. Uh, today, one thing I wanna talk about is something that I hate in this industry, and that is how middle school-like we can be at times, okay? We're sitting at different tables with our comments, with our trash talk, with our misconceptions about the other people at the table, um, and it's just petty. And that's what we're gonna talk about. So if you're confused, stick around, and after the intro, we'll go into it. All right, so before I begin, I know I had said I was gonna put out content like crazy, um, but I kind of took a step back a little bit and realized that I don't just want to force content. I want to put out content that I actually think about, content that I actually like think will be beneficial to you guys. And so I kind of slammed on the brakes for a little while, and I'm just going to do things at my pace, not at the pace that YouTube or algorithms or anything like that say that I should. So that's what I'm doing. Also, as you can see, this annoying microphone is in my face. I am not an audio guy. And so I got sick and tired of like reading in the comments, hey, great video, but the audio sucks. Um, and so I'm just gonna have the mic right here. So if it sucks, there's nothing I can do about it. All right, good mic, expensive mic, but it's all up here. It's not up here, it's not back there, it's right here. So yeah, we're gonna get started. Right now I'm chilling with a little afternoon pour of whistle pig whiskey and i just want to chat with you guys so what am i talking about when i'm talking about like these middle school table that we're at um well for this video because there's quite a few things that it could be if i'm honest but for this video it's the main example is how as someone who shoots both photo and video one thing i hate is being in a wedding videographer's facebook group and seeing the post about the dumb photographer who got in the shot for my ceremony. They ruined my ceremony shot. It would have been so epic if it wasn't for that stupid, dumb photographer. And then you got all these comments of all these videographers that are like, yeah, that person sucks. Like, they should not be professional. Like, they need to learn how to do this, how to do that. And it's just over and over. And it happens all the time, okay? Photographers, before you cast your judgment, okay? I'll be in the same kind of photography groups and I'll see, man, that stupid videographer got in, the, got in my shot in the ceremony or they ruined my portrait time or this, that, and whatever. And it's just back and forth and back and forth and encouraging one another like, hey, yeah, videographer, that photographer's the worst. Hey, photographer, that videographer's the worst. And it's just petty. It's simply petty. And... I would think that we're all kind of in the same boat, that we're trying to do something that we know and we love and that we're good at, and that our goal, at least it should be, is to give the couple the best experience. But instead, we have this us versus them mentality, and we need to cut the crap. It needs to stop. This us versus them thing needs to stop. We need to grow up. We need to be professional. We need to make sure that we're putting our couples and not ourselves first. We need to get over ourselves, plain and simple. Get over yourself. That's what I'm gonna say. If you've ever been a videographer posting about a photographer, get over yourself. If you've ever been a photographer talking about a videographer, get over yourself. Real simple, three easy words, okay? And stop being so self-important. One thing I was told back in the day um, that we all need to realize is that we are not that important. And so put that in your mind as a photographer and a videographer and get your focus back on what matters, the couple's experience. So how do we do that? How do we not have to result in videography groups and photography groups talking bad about each other, ruining our creative process or anything like that? First, the key is communication. That's for any relationship, especially if you're married, you know this. Marriage relies on communication. All relationships work based off of how good the communication is, okay? so. In my relationships, when they thrive, it's great communication. In my relationships, when they suffer, it's bad communication. So what we have to make sure we are doing is 
communicating. Yes, it's a very short-lived relationship with us and that videographer or photographer. Like, chances are it's a few hours and then we're done. But communication still matters to make sure that you and them and the couple thrive. So communication is key. So the first thing when it comes to communication is if you are working with someone new that you've never worked with, the couple tells you that this is the photographer or that's the videographer, reach out to that person. Be like, yo, what's up, man? I'm shooting so-and-so and so-and-so's -and -so wedding with you. Um, I know that our styles may be a little bit different, so I just wanted to reach out and see how we can best work together. I wanna make sure that from everything, from how we create the schedule to how we handle the day, kind of works smoothly and perfectly for the couple. So let's kind of get some time together, maybe over coffee or over Zoom, and kind of just walk through a little bit of how we do things. Boom, start that off on the right foot. The worst thing you wanna do is, for the first time, talk to this person on the day of the wedding and think that all of a sudden you guys are gonna have this perfect seamless relationship where no one bumps into each other. That's just crazy, that's just foolish. That doesn't happen in any other relationship. I don't know why you think it's gonna work in a photographer and videographer relationship, okay? So second for communication, on the day of, connect immediately. Don't go into full shooting mode like you show up, pulling up on, you know, driving up, pulling up on two wheels like, hurry, gotta shoot, and then all of a sudden your camera's out and you start the day. Like, no, slow the freak down, get there a few minutes early, and connect with the other person and be like, hey, how, do, how are you planning on tackle the day? This is what I kind of do, and I want to make sure that we kind of work side by side and we're able to make this a smooth and easy process. Boom, another way that communication gets you on the right foot. You start the day off that way. 90% of the time, it's just a matter of one person taking the lead and the other person's like, yeah, I'm totally down following that and I'll just shoot side by side with you. Boom. If you're one of those photographers or videographers that are like, well, this is my creative process. I don't want you stealing how I set up my um, detail shots. Like you need to do your own detail shots. Like, first of all, don't be that guy or girl. Like that's just ridiculous. Like. If you want the day to run smooth, just partner up, create a good layout uh, on a flat lay or on a table or whatever. Stop thinking that that's your creative height of like expertise. Let that person capture it, move on with the day. It's real simple, real easy. No one is getting famous or like succeeding in life based off of like how they put their flat lay designs of details. That's just silly. Let's move along. Let's make it quick. Let's make it simple. Let's make it easy for the couple. All right. So that's that communicate there. Then before the ceremony, this is where a lot of people step on each other's toes. So the best thing to do is say, hey, how do you plan on tackling the ceremony? This is what I do. I typically have my photographer here, my second shooter there, and then this is how I typically move around. Oh, perfect, you're gonna have a camera there and there. Can we just make sure that it's pulled back this way when I capture this one thing that's one of the most important things I do? I've never heard someone say, yeah, no, I don't really care how you shoot it. Like, if I get in your way, I get in your way. No, nine times out of 10, forget that. 9.9 .9 times out of 10, the person's gonna be like, oh, okay, yeah, perfect. This is what's important to me. Can we make sure that that's not ruined? Yeah, boom, crisis averted. No one's posting an Instagram, I mean, in Facebook the next day about how horrible the person was that walked into your shot because you spoke about your shots. And videographers, and photographers, come on. Like, there's so many things that you can do to prevent that person getting in your shot. Multiple cameras, multiple shooters, communication. It's not that hard. Work together. Last, when it comes to communication, is once you've done those three things above, by the time the ceremony's done, communication will be so on point that it's like, a perfect dance and no one's stepping on each other's toes. It's like a beautiful waltz or a beautiful salsa for us Puerto Ricans and whatnot. Um, and, and it's beautiful. Like you start working together from pre-wedding, at the start of the wedding, ceremony time, everything else, portrait time, reception, everything like that. You're bouncing things off of each other, being like, hey, you need anything? No. Do you need anything? No. Whoever's leading the day, just make sure you ask that person before you move on. Like, hey, I finished this pose. Do you need anything else before I move locations? Give each other the opportunity to create magic. 
that's what we're here for is the couple. So give each other space, give each other respect, give each other room. Moving past communication onto the next point, educate yourself, okay? One reason that I never had to go into a Facebook group or complain to other people about a photographer or videographer is because I know what goes into both. I have been a videographer and a photographer and I have shot weddings in both um, positions. So I know what a videographer needs. So when I'm the photographer, I'm trying to make sure that I'm accommodating to the videographer. When I'm the videographer, I know what a photographer needs. So I'm trying to be accommodating to the videographer. Both jobs are equally hard, okay? And to diminish the respect or time that the other person needs is wrong and silly. So we have to make sure that we leave ourselves room to grow as professionals. And so one thing I would say and challenge you, you don't have to take me up on it, but if you really wanna be a better photographer and a better videographer and better to your couples, I would say as a photographer, find a videographer that you can second shoot with. Like learn how a videographer operates to know what they need so that you can be a better assistant to them on the wedding day. And if you're a videographer, do the same. Second shoot as a photographer. See what it takes to be a photographer so that you know how to be respectful and to help the other person come wedding day so that you can give the couple the best experience. It's no good if they get a great video or great photos, but that the other person was completely unrealistic or just impossible to work with. So that would be my second point. So I truly suggest that you learn that because like GI Joe says, knowing is half the battle. So if you know how they operate, then everything else kind of starts to flow and it would not be a huge problem because you wear both hats or you have worn both hats so you know what that's like. So that would be my second point. My third suggestion would be to find a videographer that you can refer a couple to, someone that you work with nonstop. Kind of like when you start working with a second shooter multiple times, it kind of just starts to flow naturally and you know each other, you know what each other needs, you know how to get the best shots, you know that the other person's gonna get the best shots. You kind of don't have to go through it like every single time the same way because it just got easier and easier as you guys worked together. So finding a videographer, photographer um, that you can suggest to your couples, maybe even create a package that tells the couples, hey, if you work with this person as well, you'll get a deal from both of us and a team that works well together so that we don't step on each other's toes. Couples want something that is seamless, something that from photo and video collections just looks like they, we're, we're packaged together. So why not package it together? So we used to do this back in the day. Um, before I really had a full on team, I had a videographer and then he kind of went off to do his own thing, but we packaged it. Uh, my boy, Dan Ferrios, we packaged it to our couples like, Hey, we know how to work together. We know how to make sure that your day is perfect. We know how to make sure that what you see from photo and video matches and couples loved that. Then obviously like the team grew and now I have my guys um, and, and they do an incredible job. Like we know each other, like the back of each other's hands and we're able to kind of just make sure that it, it, it flows. But if you don't plan on expanding your company to include either photo and video, depending on what you do, um, find someone that you can pair up with to give that couple that seamless experience. It'll be something that you actually enjoy doing and something that um, seems fun at the end of the day because you're hanging out with someone that you've worked with multiple times and you guys can kind of just connect that way. So what if all of those things fail? Okay, communication failed um, and, and you weren't able to get in touch with that photographer, videographer, they didn't reach back out to you um, or they just seem to be a little bit difficult and they're kind of like, nope, I'm not gonna shoot the same way as you. Uh, it's just not my style, not what I'm gonna do. Um, what if like you're not able to find someone to partner with and create a package for or anything like that? Like what if all the things I talked about failed? Cool, here's two things. One, still communicate. You wanna do everything you can and still communicate um, because that will give you an idea of what to expect from the day. So you tell this photographer or videographer how you're gonna shoot, da 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 da, and they say, yeah, tough luck, not my vibe, not doing it that way, like, sorry, sucks for you. Um, that will then give you an 
opportunity to pivot and figure out how best to still capture this wedding. So for example, I shot a wedding of this amazing, amazing couple, okay? So beautiful. We're in this beautiful garden and, you know, it's just gonna be a great, great day. So I get there and me and my second shooter, my boy Ron, Ron, what up, baby? Um, and, and, and so we get to the wedding and the videographer's style is gonna be completely different. They want everything whitewashed, backlit, um, to a point where the couple's got like no skin um, because it just faded into the background. Like it's, it wasn't flattering, beautiful um, Jose Villa type backlit. This was just like off-putting, like, ooh, goodness gracious. Um, and that's obviously not my vibe. Uh, so we kind of spoke with the videographer and you know, I was like, so, so what, what's your guys' plan? Like, what, what are you guys trying to do? They let me know. I was like, listen, our styles are completely, completely different, obviously. Um, and this was a videographer that the couple's family wound up um, booking last minute for them. So the couple didn't really know that the styles were going to clash so much. Um, but I was pretty much like, okay, this is obviously not going to be a side-by-side -side shooting thing. So I was like, okay, what, what, what do you guys need to do? Like, how much time do you need here? And so when it came to prep, I was like, okay, cool. So I'm going to let you guys capture this real quick, like, and then I'm going to move things around and, and, and kind of do what I have to do. And so they kind of shifted a little bit to allow me to lead that part of the day. Um, after prep, cool, we're moving on to the first look. This is when I kind of knew that things were just not going to work as like a dance. Uh, the first look came and it was gorgeous, beautiful, such good reaction from the groom, authentic, real, sweet. Um, it was just a great, great moment. And I'm about to move on to the next thing after the couple has a few minutes. Um, but the videographers interject and they go, okay, so what we want to do is we want to do that again from a different angle, but we want you, the groom, to have a bigger, more elated reaction. And my jaw freaking dropped. Like, holy cow, you just told the groom that his reaction to his bride was not good enough and that you needed to tweak that. And so the couple looked at me like, holy frick, like we were on the same page. These video guys weren't. And I knew that it was just gonna be staged and nothing was gonna be authentic and real. And that completely goes against what I do. So I looked at the videographers, I said, all right guys, our styles are completely different. So what we're gonna do is for the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna leave you with the couple to do their portrait time. And then for the rest of portrait time, I need you guys to go do something and allow me to be with the couple. And it was the best idea to, to realize that ways were gonna be different. And then when it came to the ceremony, I walked up to the guys, I was like, guys, this is where our team's gonna be. I need you guys to just make sure that you are not there. Like, I need you to make sure you guys are not there. And so I kept communicating, even though I knew that stylistically we were not gonna vibe so you have to make sure that that you communicate and make sure that the couple's best interest in mind at the end of the day that couple thanked me because they really wanted authentic real moments and that i was able to see that that's not what they were going to get they were thankful that i separated how things would be captured on that day um but at the end of the day our jobs are not to be the most creative the most awesome, the most respected photographers and videographers out there. That's just not it. Our purpose is to deliver the best photo and video content to our couples. That's it. So we need to swallow our pride, we need to communicate, and we need to work with one another. So repeat after me, I will get over myself. Come on, at your computer, on your phone, I don't really care who's in the room, say it with me. I will get over myself. I will get over myself. I will get over myself. I, all right, get it in your head before a wedding day. Look in a mirror and say, I will get over myself. Good. Now, go do it. All right. Until next time, God bless.